Last month, we announced a $5 billion investment to build out a nationwide electric vehicle charging network so the people from rural to suburban to urban communities can all benefit from the gas savings of driving an EV. Pete Buttigieg broke the internet by suggesting that you could counter rising gas prices by buying a $70,000 electric car. I know, he didn't exactly say it that way, but it broke the internet. What he failed to say is that most people cannot afford an electric car. The average person that buys a Tesla, for example, makes more than $100,000 per year. It makes sense. EVs are something that are very unattainable for most people. First, let's talk about some of the benefits of electric cars. I'm a big fan of electric cars and I am a fan of Tesla, but I am not a fanboy. That's a big difference. I also have a pickup truck and that consumes 12 miles per gallon. In a way, the Tesla is what the Prius was back in 2005. The Prius, when it first came on the scene, some of the same issues that people brought up were the same issues that people are bringing up now. One of the issues is battery life. Battery life on a Prius, at that time, no one knew how long a battery would last. So people assumed that it was going to be extremely expensive in the beginning to replace the battery. And it was. If you took a Prius to a Toyota dealer, even today, it's going to cost you thousands to replace that main battery. Now that the Prius has been on the road for years and it's gotten a reputation, we know that the battery on a older gen Prius tends to die at about 10 years or 300,000 miles. The battery pack on my Prius did fail. But normally the way it fails is that some cells lose power or you cannot charge them so they, they're not balanced. Nowadays, because the car has been out on the road much longer than a Tesla, there are people that refurbish these batteries. So you can buy these batteries and have them fit in for less than $1,000. Back in 2005, this was not the case. Very few mechanics worked on Priuses. You had to take it to the Toyota dealer. You had to pay a whole lot more money. And the idea that the cost savings of getting a Prius over an equivalent gas car that was getting 40 miles to the gallon, it didn't make any sense. But nowadays we realize that the cost factor of Priuses has gone down so much that they make some of the best cars on the road. And I don't know about you, but you must remember celebrities getting Toyota Priuses as status symbols. It's the same now, exactly the same with Teslas, except the Tesla is a much more fanboy base. So we come back to the Prius because Tesla, one of the main issues that we have is how long will this battery pack last? And I believe we're gonna encounter the same thing. I eventually believe that the battery is going to come down in price. The Tesla is a little bit different than a regular EV because the Tesla is being used as a status symbol. But the people that get the Tesla and EVs tend to be professional. They tend to make plenty of money, makes over $100,000. These people love technology. They also love the idea of charging at home. Now, charging at home is great unless you don't have a home. One of the conveniences to owning an electric vehicle is having a house. And having a house with a garage also helps. Somehow, people think that an average person can afford $40,000 for a car. That's a sign that perhaps you are out of touch. 
most people cannot afford a $40,000 car. Now, the average sale of a new car is about $46,000. But that's a different type of person. People that are often buying new cars have many more options than people that are poor. Now, you take poor people that are on a fixed income or are working for minimum wage, there's no way they can afford an expensive car. Many poor people buy cars for less than $2,000. The used market dictates a lot of what a poor person can afford. One of the things that was brought to my attention is that there's a lot of people that think EVs are cheaper than what they really are. And one of the cars that people bring up is the Nissan LEAF. Nissan is proud to present LEAF, our new zero emissions, 100% electric car. This is not a concept car or a test model. LEAF is a full production Nissan vehicle. The Nissan LEAF is great. It's been around for a while. It's got a track record, but unfortunately, the cars, the Nissan Leafs that are about $10,000 and less, and I've even seen these for about $3,500, they often have degraded batteries. So the range is severely limited because the battery is just a little bit more worn. So the Nissan Leaf in the Washington DC area has been used for taxi cab drivers and nowadays they're selling those. So even with an 80,000 mile Nissan Leaf, it's going to have a very limited range of about 40 miles to 50 miles per charge. That's not enough for a lot of people because if you're going to be buying a $5,000 car, you want to have a significantly larger range. $5,000 of an internal combustion engine car gets you quite a bit. It gets you a fairly modern Toyota Corolla, for example, that gets 30 to 40 miles to the gallon. For $5,000, you could also get a Toyota Prius. And the Prius is a car that's been around so much that it's got a track record of being durable and just extremely reliable. There are many used cars that you can get to get 40 miles to the gallon that are less than what you would pay for an EV that gets 40 miles range. And there's not gonna be a question mark regarding the battery because right now to replace a battery on a Nissan Leaf that's about $5,000, it could be $5,000. So you could have a $10,000 car that really is only worth $5,000. So that is why the price of some EVs like the Nissan Leaf are cheap. And I like the Nissan Leaf. I've thought about buying a Nissan Leaf, but because of their range is so small, it doesn't make a car for somebody that needs a car for everyday errands. And if you have kids and if you do any trips, you're simply not going to get along with the Nissan Leaf. Another issue with people that don't buy EVs is that they simply do not have homes. They do not live in houses. And even if they have a house, it's usually rented and you can't just install a a plug for an electric car without the owner's permission and often people have street parking so that's very limiting as well normally for an EV to work in our current climate you need a garage or at least a driveway and you need to own your own house or have a house already with the proper hookups for electrics and a lot of whole old homes cannot handle charging an electric vehicle. So with the added expense of getting an EV, you also have to charge the EV and install the charging station at the house. If you have an apartment, then you have no way of really charging it. But you might say, why don't you just charge it at a garage? 
Well, if you get a Nissan Leaf for $5,000, the range is so short that you might just be cutting it close. You might not even make it to the garage. If you have a range of 50 and your commute is 20, you only have a couple like miles to kind of play with and go charge somewhere every single day. Now there are subsidies by the government, I believe up to $7,500 that you could use to purchasing an EV. But the problem is only people in the middle class and up can still benefit from these subsidies. Poor people are not buying any car for over $10,000. Poor people generally buy cars that are under $2,000. And trust me, I have bought plenty of cars and vehicles for under $1,000. Those are the ones I stick with. Those are the ones that I will fix myself. What if everything ran on gas? Then again, what if everything didn't? The 100% electric, zero gas Nissan LEAF. Innovation for the planet, innovation for all. One of the things that gets left out of the EV conversation are pickup trucks. Normally when people are looking into people that use pickup trucks, they think they are to blame. Normally I see comments on Twitter saying that people that buy pickup trucks are idiots. They were extremely myopic for buying a gas guzzler. But many people that buy pickup trucks use them for work and usually these pickup trucks get 10 to 12 to 15 miles per gallon but they need the ability of buying a truck that can be used to work now when that comes to passing the bill on to you for doing work normally people are unwilling to pay for the extra gas cost so that usually ends up being a cost that the person owning the truck has to pay the future of pickup trucks is looking extremely good. There's a couple hybrid options on the market. There are cyber trucks from Tesla that are popping up, but unfortunately these trucks don't seem to be work trucks. A lot of people that get pickup trucks are gonna be using them to work. They're gonna be pull it, putting stuff in the back, they're gonna be hauling machinery, and there is a question mark when it comes to EVs and pickup trucks. I know that electric motors are extremely strong for torque, but I'm unsure if the EV pickup truck will be a hit. There are segments of pickup trucks. There are the lifestyle trucks, the people that tend to buy Honda Ridge lines that don't use them for work, but it's a car slash pickup truck. There's the people that get F-150s and Nissan Frontiers. And then there's another segment of pickup trucks, the heavy duty type of pickup truck, like an F-350. I'm not really sure if the EV market is gonna cater to these people. The lifestyle trucks, yeah, that sounds good. It's people who don't really use pickup trucks for work, but the people that use pickup trucks for work, I'm not sure they're going to embrace the electric craze as much as the others. There's a pretty good substantial electric vehicle marketplace. The cheapest electric vehicles you can get are by far the Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf has been around the most. Another car that's not very popular is the BMW i3. The BMW i3 has a couple of versions. One, it's got a gas generator, so in case you lose some of the range, you could always have a little gas uh, generator and get you to a charging station. But that's a $50,000 car that I have seen as low as $15,000. And it's made by a BMW, very wacky. Uh, I've seen many of these on the road. You can find them on the marketplace, but there's not many around. There's something to be said about buying something that's been sold a lot. That means that you can get parts much cheaper than something that's so niche as the BMW i3. There's something to be said about Tesla. First, this has got the best resale value of the EVs, and EVs do not have a great resale value. The Tesla Model S, the first one, 
I have seen for about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars with about a hundred thousand miles. To me, that's a great buy, but a lot of people don't want a car to be over a hundred thousand miles. And there is a questionable thing about the battery. I don't know how long a Tesla battery is going to last. I have read a lot about Tesla and they seem to be extremely durable. Another thing to keep in mind is that Tesla is taking a page directly out of Apple and making you service at the Tesla dealer. It gets very expensive. If anything breaks on that car, they just replace it altogether. It's a new way of company, running a company. If you need a door handle, you're going to be paying $1,000 for the actuator. It's an incredibly expensive car to fix. It's very similar to owning a Porsche. When you have a Porsche or Porsche, you pay for that car in maintenance. It's much more expensive. And that's the reason I like Toyota Corollas. If anything breaks, you can pretty much get it for about $100 and less, and you're on your way. Everybody knows how to work on a Toyota Corolla. You can take it to any garage. The charging is interesting. Where I live in the Washington DC area, there's plenty of places to charge. I rode an electric motorcycle for a while and I didn't have a charging station at my house, but I found them very easily. And there are free charging stations as well. There's charging in garages and they're just popping up everywhere. It's not as bad as most people think, but for the motorcycling part, I'll probably do another video on the motorcycling craze for EV. I do not like the EVs for motorcycles, but for cars, I think they're much further ahead. I know that everybody wants to jump on the EV bandwagon, but unfortunately, they're not ready yet for everybody. The solution really is to get inexpensive used cars. You can get cars for less than a thousand dollars. If you really wanted to save money, a gas car that costs less than a thousand dollars, a Toyota Corolla from 1995 will get 40 miles to the gallon. A Honda Civic from the early 90s can get 50 miles to the gallon. A Honda Insight from 2001 got 70 miles to the gallon. If you really want to save money, the best thing you can possibly do is get a scooter. If you get a scooter that costs $1,500, like a Honda Elite 110, for example, that bike gets 105 miles to the gallon. It's got a speed, top speed of 50 miles an hour. That doesn't make sense for a lot of people. You could also electrify your bicycle. You can make your bicycle fully electric if you wanted to embrace the EV world. That's a little baby step into the EV world. EVs are here to stay. We should all embrace them, but perhaps we need to embrace them when the price comes down. This is in the president's Build Back Better proposal to Congress. The idea is to make sure that we buy down that sticker cost so that everybody can capture the savings, because this is the future. I, again, there's no question whether autos are headed electric. The question is, will we get there in time?